I'm going to do sort of a take two from last time that I did this. Let's get this in focus. So, gamers, I'm tired of there not being Jack 4. Naughty Dog peaked with Jack X, which is the greatest uh, combat racing, Jack and Daxter based racing game of all time. And they've been sort of just, you know, floundering about now. I don't really know, you know, they sort of lost their direction. Now they're doing things like this Uncharted business, this, this Last of Us business. I don't know how far that's going to get them. I think they've really lost their way. So I'm taking it upon myself to, to take upon the mantle of Jack and Daxter based platforming action. Let's get some fireworks in here. Yeah, I'm going to be making Jack 4 all by myself in one month. It's pretty feasible, I think. I think this should go pretty well. All right, so you might be wondering, why am I doing this? Well, it's funny. It's good for a laugh. It's good for a, it's good for a chuckle, even a, even a little knee slapping, if you will. And two, there's a website called GloriousTrainWrecks.com. And on this website, people can host these things called game jams. And one of the game jams is the open world game jam. I mean, open world jam. It's actually, it can be anything. It doesn't actually, it doesn't need to be games. All it has to be is, it has to make a world, and it has to be open. That's the rules. That's how, that's how, that's what the, that's lawyer titles. Okay, number three, analysis of Jack's gameplay to improve game dev skill. So, I want to be better at making games. And what is better than Jack 3. A lot of things actually. It's it's actually it's actually pretty it's it's you know, not it's like worse Ratchet and Clank. It's like Ratchet and Clank but not as good essentially. Uh but I but you know, if you only really like it if you were 9 when you played it and it just so happens that I was 9 when I played it. All right. So now let's get into the legality of it. You might be wondering, this is illegal. Yes. It is. This is, Jack 4 is not a parody of Jack 3. It is a full, like, video game. It's not fair use. This is not fair use either, actually. Well, okay, so a presentation like this could be considered fair use because, like, even though I'm using uh, uh, copyrighted assets, it's like no one's going to be like, oh, this is just like playing Jack 3. No, they're not. But, but with Jack 4, that's exactly what they're going to think. They're going to think, wow, this is way better than Jack 3. This is the greatest game. I don't even need to buy Jack 3 anymore. And that's where it becomes copyright infringement. And uh, I will be devastated both both emotionally and financially in any litigation with Naughty Dog. I will be blacklisted from the industry, be blackballed, black tarred, black feathered, uh, black faced. That's how games work. Okay, so I've deployed countermeasures. My countermeasure is that I'm not going to make Jack 4. I'm going to make something else. So. Sorry to all my fans who, for some reason or other, got the impression that I was going to, like, make Jack 4. I don't know how they got that impression, but no, it's going to be an original game that just so happens to be Jack 4. It'll be, like, a different character. That's, that's what's happening here. These, these stolen 3D assets that I stole with my own two hands, I stole them. They're sacrificing Daxter on this altar to create an original character that I'll use in the game. That's what's happening here. That's the only interpretation. I mean, the other interpretation is that Daxter's doing like a little dance, and they're they're being polite about it, but they're not actually that impressed. That's the only other valid interpretation. If you if you think of anything else that this scene could possibly be, I will be inside of your home at two p.m. to discuss it, and you will not survive. Okay, next slide. So it's time for introductions. No introduction is necessary. I'm Needleful, obviously. I make I make hit video games. I make hit comics. Uh, I own I own needleful.net, epicgamercontent.xyz, howtomakebombs.com. I own that site. That's not a joke. Howtomakebombs.com. I should have bought howtobuildbombs.com. Howtobuildbombs.com is a way better sounding website, way more memorable. It has that nice alliteration, howtobuildbombs.com. I did not buy howtobuildbombs.com. I bought howtomakebombs.com. It is a mistake that will haunt me for the rest of my life. All right, next slide. So, time... For my life story. A few years ago, like 35 years ago, I guess, I was working on a graphic novel called The Second to Last Funeral. Uh, I did not get very far, as you can tell, before it ballooned horrifically in scope, so I decided to take a break 
and work on a much smaller project, a, a science fiction comic series called Superior Pseudo, which I got, I got a little bit farther on, but this ballooned horrifically in scope, so I decided to take a break with a much smaller comic, uh, Super Squad, and this turned out, uh, it turned out, but it ballooned horrifically in scope, so I decided to take a break with a much smaller project, a Sonic the Hedgehog fan game called Finding Amy Rose. You can actually see clips of it on my YouTube channel, uh, but this ballooned horrifically in scope, so I decided to take a break with a much smaller project, uh, an unnamed science fiction shooter that you can also see on my YouTube channel. Uh, this is not from that. This is just a little, this is just a, a Fabergé painting of a purple egg screaming at itself. That's what it's called. Uh, but this ballooned horrifically in scope, unfortunately, so I decided to take a break with a much smaller project, a 3D platformer called Kitty Gets a Burger. This one actually had a playable demo released that I then unlisted because it wasn't very good, actually. It was a very early prototype. But then this game ballooned horrifically in scope, so I decided to take a break with a much smaller project, a first-person platformer called Slide Rules. And this is nearly done, but it ballooned horrifically in scope. So I decided to take a break with a much smaller project, Jack 4. And that's where we are now. So, basically, what I'm saying is, once Jack 4 is complete, all of these other projects will rapidly fall in line, and then I will ascend to godhood. That's true. That's what's happening. That's what's at stake here. Do you understand? If I make this game, I will unlock the secrets to productive creativity, and I will uh, live my dreams out. I will quit my job and become an artist. And if my boss is watching, that's a joke. My stock awards haven't vested yet. Uh, so, gamers, let's make Jack 4. So, if you, you may realize that this is going to be the second stream... So I'll show you a little bit of the first stream to help you summarize it, to help summarize it a little, a little bit. Great, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Needleful. That was delightful, delightful. And may I say, what splendid audio. I did not realize you could record such clear audio on a potato as a microphone. Yeah, so that stream is completely unusable. I did not check the microphone once in the entire two and a half hours I was streaming, and it turns out I should have just used the Blue Yeti. I should have used Old Faithful, the Blue Yeti, and not my hit funny gamer microphone, because that turned out disastrously. All right. So now, let's get into this project. So I'm going to show you what I've done so far with my hit game, Jack 4. This is about two and a half hours of work. I made this little test area. I made this little character. As you can see, I can move around. I can jump. I can also crouch. And then I can roll jump. And I can crouch jump. And it's pretty good. It's pretty good. There's some things that I want to change, some things I want to fix, like you go up slopes really slowly. And for some reason, you can just walk up these ones even faster. I don't know why, for some reason, like, like look, look at this. You go, up, you go up this more slowly than this. Sometimes. Sometimes. If you hit this straight on, you don't go up. But if you hit it from the side, you just go up perfectly. What the hell is happening? You know, that's, so that's nonsense. I'm going to fix that. That's going to be objective number one. And then objective number two is I'm going to build the character out. Now, hang on for a moment. I'm going to check to make sure the stream is not dead. Perfect. Wonderful. Zero viewers, but that's just to be expected. All right, so what I need to do is I need to exit out of here. And now let's start work on the player. First, I'm going to give a little summary of what we've done so far. Well, I mean, what I've done. You didn't do anything. Okay, so there's a bunch of constants for things like run speed, walking speed, gravity, which is really high. That's way higher than normal gravity, but it feels good. Then there's more complicated things like the dot product that is considered the ground, the dot product that's considered sliding on a wall, coyote time, coyote timer, 
all this stuff in like various jump heights for the various jumps, the various movement speeds, acceleration. So I'm going to do a little walkthrough of the code to actually explain everything that's happening. The game is organized as something called a state machine. Let's get a nice little drawing application out. I'm going to unplug this controller and plug in my art tablet. Eventually. Eventually. All right. So. In our state machine, it's easy to think about games in terms of, like, moving. Hang on. Or moving between states. So, the main state is ground. This means walking and standing still. As long as you're on the ground, you're in the ground state. And then, you can go to the fall state. In the fall state, you're not on the ground anymore, and so you move differently. And then, you can also be in the jump state by pressing jump. And then you go to the fall state. And then let's see, you can go to crouch. You can go to roll. You can go to crouch jump, which goes to fall, or you can go to roll jump. which also goes to fall. So that's how the states work. And it's easy because each of these you move slightly differently. So it's useful to just think of them as completely separate states where the player can be in and then just deal with each of them individually rather than trying to mix and match code. So the way that I do that is I have this enum for the state. So it has each of those states and another one called slide, which I forgot to add to there. Oh well. And then we set our default state to the ground. And then every frame, it gets your input, it gets the desired direction that we want to move based on that input, and then it finds the floor. So this basically just checks each collision against the ob When the object moves, it gets like all of the collisions that it detected, and then it finds whichever one is the most vertical, and that's going to be our best floor. Best floor dot and best normal. And then this just prints that out. So, and then every frame, based on, our given, based on our current state, there's a number of ways we can transition to different states. So if you're on the ground and you press the jump button, the next state is going to be the base jump. And then for like crouching, you can either roll if you're going fast enough, or you can crouch, etc., etc. There's a whole bunch of different transitions for each state. And this makes it easy to like do complicated things like if you're, say, uh, jumping, it's going to be a fixed amount of time until you transition into falling. If you're crouch jumping, it'll be a different amount of time, etc. And that allows for like really complicated stuff. And then, after it determines what next state should be, it then sets the state. And that just does some certain things. So right now, because there's no animations, no sound effects, no particle effects or anything like that, it doesn't do much. It does like it swaps out these meshes for standing and crouching. So if we turn, if we go back to here, it's just swapping out the capsule for a cylinder whenever you crouch. And this is where it does that. But there are some important things like the set state function is where jumping actually applies the velocity. So it actually increases our vertical velocity by this amount. And for roll jumping, it gives us a little forward boost through this roll jump lurch. So that's where all of these constants come in. And then, finally, it matches the state once again. After it's set the new state, it checks that, and it moves, to, and you move differently depending on what state it is. So like, when you're sliding, you can't move against the wall and stuff like that. So, this is all, I think, pretty clear. 
So now, let's go. I want to do one more th movement thing before we move on to the next part, because the movement is almost good enough. However, there's some annoying things that I mentioned earlier, so let's go back into the game, actually. So the annoyances are, when you run into, when you're going up a uh, uh, lead, or when you're going up a sloped surface, you move really slowly, and when you're moving sideways, it's still pretty easy to actually cheese it and go up. Ideally, the player shouldn't be able to. Like here, you can see that I'm moving directly into the wall, and I can't go up. That's good. And then if I just move at a slight corner, that's bad. I don't want to do that. I don't want to give the player that. Because then, if the player can just get anywhere, it's not fun to platform. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that when you press forward right now, what it does is your movement is like this. It moves directly in a straight line. And that means that it hits this. It hits the wall, and it like digs into the slope. So what I want to do is I want to rotate this so that instead it goes like this. You know, instead of going, instead of assuming that the ground is perfectly straight, you're going to walk a little bit up a slope or a little bit down a slope. Sorry, I had to like clear my throat. Okay, so I'm going to rotate this whole like desired velocity, or I'm going to rotate this part based on the actual slope of the floor, so that way we can figure out like how to actually move up slopes more effective or more efficiently. So let's see. I'll make a new function. then we'll have our new ground normal. Hang on. Uh. And what we need is So we're going to take the angle between perfectly straight up and our angle to the ground normal. Our angle is, oh wait, no. And then the angle is something called the cross product. You just take a vector calculus class. I'm not going to explain to you what a cross product is, but basically, if you want the axis of rotation, you do cross product. And then, if our axis is normal, if our axis isn't equal to zero. Because if the axis is zero, we can't rotate around it because it's not it's not a direction. Then we will do desired velocity rotated about the axis by the angle. So essentially this just does exactly what we wanted. It gets Let's say this is up, and this is the direction of the floor. It gets that angle, and then, if this is the old direction, this would be the new direction, because these angles equal each other. And then, let's get, let's just call Excel. Delta. Let's see how that works. So I should be able to just drop this in there.
I gotta separate these two now. Accelerate, ground. Best normal, if, actually. Where is that? Yeah, if we don't find an actual ground, this is zero. So I'm going to set it so that if it's equal to zero, we'll just use up. Let's see what this does. So we should be moving pretty quickly. Yeah, we can see now. I move pretty fast when I'm going up slopes. So that seems to work exactly how I wanted it to. I am perfect at everything at my first attempt. Uh, I am a gamer god. Let's see, but now the sliding does the sliding still doesn't work. Because when you're going diagonally, you can just go up that. So I'm gonna make another thing. It's almost going to be identical to this, except I'm going to do that. If the desired velocity has a y component that's greater than zero, it's just going to ignore it. Let's see what that does. Oh wait. I actually have to use it first. So basically, this should work the same way as moving on the ground does now, where it takes into account this like vertical movement. But if you're going up, it should uh, not do what it's doing right now. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, so that's not uh, quite what I wanted. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to try this. So basically, if you're moving into the ground, in other words, the dot product is less than zero between the direction you're going and your normal, basically, uh, the dot product of two vectors is less than zero if they're like going in opposite directions. It's positive if they're going the same direction. And it's and if they're going like perfectly perpendicular to each other, then the dot product is zero. And that's basically my entire understanding of the dot product. Then there's like stuff in between that which I don't particularly care about. So then it'll be slide.
and basically this slide function it takes the it basically just removes the parallel component so once you slide B for example it would be something like this it's also called something called or it's also called the vector rejection it's the opposite of the vector projection which you probably should just study vectors a little bit if you want to know that. Let's see what this does. Nothing. It doesn't do it at all what I wanted, but it does sometimes fall really fast, which is cool. Oh, I know what it is. Completely incorrect, completely incorrect behavior. That is kind of funny, though. So basically... I can, if I hit the ground and then go down, it moves really, really fast. Wait, what am I doing? I just realized this is rotated. So it's not going to be like this. It's always going to be perpendicular to the normal because I already rotated it. What am I doing? Hmm. This almost works. And because of the way that I did it, you roll up hills very slowly, which I think that's fine. I don't roll up hills very fast either. Hmm. So, I need to figure out how to make the slide not go up walls. Let's use one of those little UI debug things that I made. So essentially, for the player, I added a bunch, of, I added a, a set of labels with just random stuff or generic data that I can do whatever I want with. Let's make a three. And this will just print out our desired velocity. right. Y is zero. And then I can slide down really fast, which is janky. I'm just, you know what? That's it. I've revoked desired velocity's Y privileges can't affect it at all. It almost works, but it's just so easy to cheese it. Like, look at that. I'm going to be here all day. And also, another thing that I want to change or fix is how you slide down slopes. So you know what? You know what? I'll just let the player have it. I'll just... If the player can cheese their way up slopes, they can just, I'll do, I mean, you can already just hold shift and crawl up a slope anyway, so it's not like it's that big a deal if they can, like, cheese their way up these. So, next thing, so we're going to consider that done, good enough. Next thing I'm going to do 
is fix this sliding. That's really annoying. I don't know how to do that. Uh, if wait now. If length greater than walking speed and If our desired velocity is zero, then we're just going to stop. And this is going to use Excel start. Let's see how that works. It didn't do anything. I'm going to move this up so that way I know I'm going to move that into here. That way I always keep track of my desired velocity. I'll do the length squared, and I just use the length squared instead of length because it's slightly faster. So if if my desired velocity is less than 0 0.05, then it's going to do that, and it's not working right. So what's happening is I'm able to stop in midair while I roll, which is not what I want. This deceleration factor should make it so that it's not actually moving any, or so that like if I'm stopping, this should go to zero. So it should just be like the desired velocity. Or so the v velocity shouldn't change, but I don't know what's happening here. also need to fix that little ramping effect. Because you can see you fly up in the air a little bit. happens if I just can't stop? Okay. That works decently well. Well, now you're a bit too quick to stop.
Yeah, you know what? Let's see how this feels. I think what I need to do is I need to set the gravity or reduce the gravity when you're on the ground so that way you don't slide so much. Where would I do that? I'm just going to see what that does. Not what I wanted. Okay. Hmm. I mean, I know what I'm doing wrong. I'm just not, you know, I'm not doing anything to account for the fact that gravity affects the player and then pushes them into the floor a little bit. What can I do to stop that? Maybe... This is sort of a cheap tactic where it just makes the player... It just makes it so the player doesn't, like, fall. And it didn't work. So when the player's on the ground, I need some sort of counterbalance going this way for friction. Maybe I can just do... something drastic, where it just reduces the velocity completely. You know what, I'll just have a clunky hat. Let's see how this works. It doesn't.
Okay, so now I'm just making the gravity like one-tenth of what it is when the player is on the ground. And, like, not moving, which doesn't work. Now that's getting me a little annoying thing where you like hop up a little bit. This does almost completely eliminate the sliding, so now it's just very, very slight. You know what? That's it, there's no gravity on the ground. Now I think I need to record like the player's uh, ground velocity or the ground normal. Essentially what I'm going to do, so if the floor is good to stand on, it'll set the ground normal to what is currently the best normal. Otherwise it does all this stuff to figure out like if you're falling or if you're sliding. And then I don't need this, I'll use the ground normal. And I'll rename this to wall normal because now ground normal is a thing. It's somewhere. I mixed these up. Okay, so for sliding, it calls this wall normal. And for ground slide, or ground movement, it uses this ground normal defined here. Basically, the goal is that it remembers the direction of the ground, and it is definitely not working right. Wow, that is working terribly. What did I do differently?
think I might have flipped a sign. I mean, that looks sort of right-ish. No? Hang on, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna commit this. I need to do some investigating. I somehow introduced some sort of like bug. So here it works okay, except when you go, except for this little thing where when you stop while going up a slope, you keep your momentum for a little bit, which I don't want. And that's what all of this is meant to avoid. To ground. So basically, if it's pointing upward, I'll set the ground normal to the best recorded normal. Otherwise, it'll stay the same as it was before. So that... How... Is this not doing what I want it to do? Okay, what on earth did I do differently? Something changed that's making it so that now it's really slow to go up this stuff. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an area. So basically, 
I think something that's also screwing up the controls is now that there's no gravity to constantly push the object into the ground, it sometimes is like floating above it. So a strategy that I like to use is just to add a little um, sphere collider. So this is basically going to be like, if anything's touching this, this thing, or the ground, it will be... Um, what am I thinking of? If anything's intersecting with this area, which is the ground area, then we're on the ground, no matter what, if we're actually colliding with stuff or not. And as you can see, it's very, very slight. Like, it's only just slightly put, sticking out. And I'll add the player to layer two. And basically, I changed these masks so that way these don't collide with each other. So, because this is on mask one, this is also on mask one, but it's not on any layers, so it won't collide with this object. So, what I'll do is, Now, So if that ground area is not colliding with anything, then it'll consider itself potentially falling. If it's colliding into something that's not, if it's colliding into a floor that's not good, or where it can't, where the player can't stand, then it'll go into slide. Actually, what I'll do is, no, that's good enough. It's slightly, slightly jank. So if I'm colliding with anything at all, that best normal will never be vector 3.0. Okay. That looks good, but now we have issues with the ground like falling. So yeah, we really go up, because now there's no gravity. So I'm also going to do... If we're actually colliding with something, the, velo the gravity will be set to zero. Otherwise, it's set to up. Actually,
So if we're not colliding with the ground, but the ground considers itself to be the ground, then it'll go down like 10 times as much gravity, which will really screw things up. Not quite what I want. So yeah, there's a very, very slight thing there. There's still very slight sliding. And we can still slide up walls. But now you don't slide down when you're standing on a slope that you can actually, like, where it considers you grounded. And that ramping thing, it's still there and that's kind of annoying, but it's okay. It's not that bad. This one will be weird. What the Sam fuck did I just do? Okay, so now what I'm doing is instead of just setting the gravity to zero, I'm actually setting it so that it goes directly into the ground. So basically, like before, my gravity was going down like this, now it's going down like that. And that should, oh, it left my tablet on the thing. So that works really nicely, so now there's no slide at all. Unless you're like actually like if you see in the top corner, I'm in this state sliding. And yeah. And now I need to figure out how to prevent the player from flying up in the air. I'll only set the ground normal when the best normal is not. I'll only set the ground normal when the best normal is actually good. That doesn't work. That did not work even slightly. That is profound. What on earth am I changing? It's like this shouldn't be different.
should behave exactly the same. Huh? What is... what does this mean? This shouldn't change anything. Whatever, that's good enough. Okay, perfect. Immaculate. We have some janky ground movement where you fly up a little bit into the air every time you stop on a sloped surface, and we have a slide function designed to keep you from going up walls that doesn't work right, so that way you can actually just go up walls if you just get at it from an angle like this. Well, actually it works okay. All right, perfect, immaculate. Now, let's go to the camera rig. So, right now, the camera looks like it's directly attached to the player, but it's not actually. If you see, this camera rig is actually a white node, and these nodes don't have any sort of transform property, so basically they're not actually parented to the player. What I'm doing is every frame I'm setting its position to be exactly the same as the player's position, but I don't want to do that. Unless... I want some nice, like, uh, following code, so that way the player so that way the player, like, when they jump, they don't actually, the camera doesn't quite go with them, so the player actually feels it when they're jumping. And then... So, we're going to take the uh, current position of the camera minus this um, actually for now this difference will just be the y coordinate. Something will go here. So for now, let's do this. Basically, now we can see when the player jumps, there's um, no like current, there's no vertical change to the uh, camera for better or worse. If So basically now I have some simple logic where the target Y is just going to be the current like Y coordinate of the uh, camera. But if the player is grounded, it'll actually follow the player where they're moving. And then let's see that in action. Maybe. That didn't quite work.
because it needed to be this. There we go. When the player's jumping, nothing happens. But when the player's on the ground, you we see now that the player camera follows them. And it's kind of janky. So I'm going to make a few little things to actually fix that. One thing is we're not actually going to have something like this. I'm going to do... Um, what am I going to do? I want it to be... I'll show you what I want it to be. Let's say... This is the player. This is the camera rig. So, I want the camera rig to be able to move, let's say, like within this range of motion. And then when the player's on the ground, this motion is a bit more constrained. So maybe this is when it's on the ground. see how that would work. So we know how far the player how far the camera is from where it wants to be, which is like right next to the player, or following the player perfectly. Hmm. I know. Let's say this is slightly wrong. The down is going to be bigger, so So the camera can be five meters below the player, or one and a half meters up the player, or above the player, unless the player is grounded, in which case it's negative one. So. player is grounded or sliding, then our lower bound for the camera will be the min camera diff ground, and then our high bound Be the max camera diff. And then if is less than is 
less than the lower bound. The what should it be? I might have to flip this. I don't know what it is. Basically, what I'm doing is we have a target Y, which is basically where the camera already is. So that's where it wants to be. And then we have like an upper accepted bound and a lower accepted bound, which depends on the camera, or which depends on whether the player's on the ground or not. Okay, if the like difference between where the player is and where the camera is is too big then it'll like compress that difference or it'll change the target y so that way it's within the bounds and then that's set here and that doesn't quite work it seems because the player should not be so low on the, on the screen. So what I'm also going to do is uh, make it so that the camera slowly goes to where its difference is. Times some like uh, these are all constants So that's going the wrong way. So yeah, we can see now the player is slowly, or the camera slowly moves to match the player, and that should be faster. So let's do like two. So basically it'll move like two meters a second. These are mixed up. We can see that the camera follows the player a little bit, but not too much, so that way you can actually see a little bit of like how fast you're moving. It's a little janky, but whatever. It's okay for now. So I will add...
Yeah, I did. I miss. I mixed up some signs here, but I don't care that much. I need to actually, because my goal for today is actually to design the character and like model and animate them, and I've already spent like two hours, like an hour and a half, on just like fixing up the movement and polishing it a little bit. Also, I need to fix that. That's good enough. And now, last but not least, I need some uh, controller support. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to unplug my tablet, plug back in my controller. I have everything except for the camera. So what I'll do is add that right now. Some fun things about Godot is that by default it sets your dead zone for controllers to 0.5, at least Godot 3. I think they fixed this in Godot 4, but that is, you may not know exactly what that means, it just means the controls feel like garbage. So change it to like 0.15 or 0.2 or something. or at least for anything where the player is going to be using an analog stick for it. Did I do that right? Up, up, down, down, left, left, right, right. Okay. So this is all camera movement. No, no, this is rotation. Wait. Is this? Where's rotation? Let's just add that. Let's see how that feels. Bad. Feels pretty bad, actually. Okay, now that's an insane amount, or that's a, a sane amount of uh, sensitivity, though it's inverted horizontally. Not bad, not bad, it feels pretty good. Now all I need to do is make sure that you can't do that.
I did this for the wrong place. This should be for the X rotation for the pitch. And it should be X axis. Okay, so basically that should, it didn't do what I wanted at all. Okay, I had to limit it to 90 degrees. And I think I'll actually limit it to like 80. All right, that looks pretty good. Now let's feel it on controller. All right, Jack 4 is basically done now. All we have to do is make an entire video game. Controller aiming and improved whatever. <sighs> All right, I'm going to take a five minute break and then we're going to get into character design. So I'll make a nice I'll make a nice little BRB message with my tablet as soon as I plug it in. This takes about 25 minutes. All right. Let's open up my little presentation, wherever it is. Concept art. Let's put on some music while I'm gone, because it'll be about ten minutes. I know. The Card City Nights soundtrack. Actually, I'll put on the Card City Nights 2 soundtrack. See you in about five minutes.
I love the soundtrack to this uh, game. Actually, I just really like Card City Nights. Alright, let's... Maybe we'll have a little bit of that. Let's see. I'm gonna adjust the volume here because it is deafening on my end and I just realized I was kind of screaming when I left. Let's see how that sounds on my end. Yeah, that's manageable. Okay, I think this will be nice, a nice level of uh, background noise. Okay, so, we're going to talk all about uh, whatever this is, whatever I presented here. I made this like two days ago, and I've completely forgotten what I was going to talk about, except that it's character design. So, the character designs in Jack and Daxter were designed by a guy named Rob uh, Bob Raffi. And we can see this is the uh, design for the first three games. So if we want to design our own protagonist for Jack 4 to avoid uh, being sued into the ground by Naughty Dog, I'm going to need to take some pointers from this guy. And he actually has really cool art. I really like his stuff. Uh, uh, I think he came from an era of video games where you could just be completely shameless with just every character design. You know, just really riding the line between, like, attractive and gratuitous, and I think I think that's some good energy. I think we can bring that in. And Bob Raffae, after his stint at uh, Naughty Dog, he went on to find, or found a company called Big Red Button, and their first major project was Sonic Boom, uh, God Help Them, a tragedy for the ages. But, I really like the character design. And I think we can see some common elements from Jack and Daxter that, and then into Uncharted all the way into Sonic Boom. Mainly, goggles are cool and bandages are yes. You know, now if only, uh, if only they'd gotten a uh, better start on their first, uh, on, their, on their experience. But there's also some other, other places where we can draw experience. To me... That this sort of like hybrid of like anime and uh, and like Western art, modern in modern days, it's really carried on by like a bunch of French studios. So specifically, Ankama, they made a show called Wakfu, which to me has a lot of the same like design sensibilities. And you can see similar things with like Rayman, which was by a French studio, and naturally it does have a significant anime inspiration as well. Honestly, probably not the specific anime. These are just anime that I like. Full Metal Alchemist looks really cool. Like, this is... It just looks good. I don't know what to tell you. And if we're going to do... The most important thing is to just make something that I like. Because I'm the one who's making this at the end of the day. Okay, with that out of the way... Let's design some characters. So I got my little, I got my fun little tablet here. I got this symmetrical filter, so that way I don't even have to draw properly. And let's figure out how to actually design characters. So I hate this symmetrical filter. That's terrible. I'll just draw asymmetrically. How about that? So first, I'm going to think about the general silhouette because for 3D games, for 3D platformers, characters tend to be pretty stocky. And I don't know exactly why, but that's just something that happens. I think it's just because Mario did it and everyone sort of just copied Mario. And like they don't know why he's like two inches tall. But they figured that they have to make their characters two inches tall. Alright, so. 
I probably should have warmed up or something. But let's just do like a basic body. I think I'm going to make a girl because that is more different than a guy. And that would probably prevent uh, any sort of like copyright litigation because like, well, how can you copy Jack if Jack is a guy and my character's a girl? That's completely different. So I'm just sketching out like basic body silhouettes. Because they have to be sort of like short and stocky. Let's go really wild with it. Let's do like the, uh, I'm going to look up. Where did my mouse go? My mouse is lost forever. If I'm designing based on French studios, I think the Rayman Fairies are a good start because I think they're also riding the line between just just completely shameless, just utterly shameless. Hmm. So let's try and design a character more cartoony. So let's do like a round head or a pointy head, weird head. You know, this would probably go a lot faster if I was better at drawing. I should I should get on that. You know, I think I can take this design even further. I think, let's try, let's just go, abs I'm just going to go nuts and crazy with it. Let's see how tiny of, like, a waist I can get. Just how ridiculous. Because I think, I think I'm going to try to, like, push the design out as far as I can. Just, like, unreasonable. And then we can pull it back into like a more reasonable design. This is too far. I've gone too far with it. This is ridiculous. Yeah, no. I don't think I can do the sort of shameless design. I feel shame from this. This is like... This is like stupid. But can I go further? What if?
It's like a, it's like it just it just, it just hit me when I'm drawing, and this is terrible. I hate this. Yeah, this isn't this isn't cool. That this isn't good anymore. This is just bad now. I do kind of like this sort of wide head. I don't know what that would actually be, though. Maybe like curly hair. This is stupid. That's not good. Let's do a skirt, even. I think the physique is good. I don't think I'm going to do like a sundress. That I don't think that's a good fit for like a Jack for Jack 4. That's good enough. All right, let's get rid of this layer. Let's put on the symmetrical filter. So the character is going to have sort of a wider head. This is basically this is basically just the Rayman fairy. I'm just I'm going to make I'm going to tone it down a bit. That's a bit I think that'd be a bit too hard to like make sell in 3D. That's an important thing to remember. This is eventually going to be, like, I'm already designing this as a turnaround for 3D. They have sort of elf like the the Jack and Daxter characters have sort of very really long elf ears. I'm I'm not gonna do that because I think that'd be making it a little too on the nose where the inspiration is.
Hmm. It's so hard to draw well with this symmetric you know, symmetry filter, but I have to have it or else I'm gonna like really screw up the design when I do 3D modeling. Could be worse, could be better. Make your hair curly. I'll make it asymmetrical, so I'll deal with that later. This is good enough, I guess. Really big hands, yikes. Ah, come on. I did not realize the transforms uh, weren't some didn't apply symmetrically Yeah, my goal for today is to have this character Designed modeled etc by the end of the day or animated as well. Hmm. I wonder, would curly hair? I mean, if I could actually make curly hair, that'd be okay. Yeah, because basically I'm imagining hair coming down like this. And this way I don't have to deal with like really long hair physics, but I can still have like a bit of bob and stuff. These caps can be bigger. Hmm. Alright, 
this is officially good enough. At least for a start as of a design. So now I need some some funny little clothes. I have no idea what she's gonna wear. Maybe like a cool scarf like that. Not bad. But if it's asymmetrical, I'll have to model it myself. Let's do like fingerless gloves. Fingerless gloves are cool. Oh wait, I need bandages, I need goggles. Let's put She's not going to wear goggles. She'll, will, she'll have goggles around her neck. So it'll be like... That looks bad. Maybe she'll have goggles. Uh... You know what? I think it's okay. If, I think one character can have cannot have can have not goggles. See, we need some shin guards. I think some knee pads maybe or something like that. Let's make this symmetrical. And let's have like, I don't know, thigh protect I don't know what I guess thigh armor. Outer thigh armor. You know. But if I make her have tights, I can do less work. So yeah, she's just wearing like normal pants and then she has her like shoes. And they'll be just like, I don't know, boots. And like this part is like a collar and a knee pad at the same time. I don't know what the top of a boot is called. up then there's a slight heel and then maybe it'll be like cool like like have like a little bit that goes in like that Yeah, and we can have like laces in there. So it'll be like that. I think this is good enough to start modeling. take this and put it in its own little thing. No, no. And I'll put 
with it because I like it this way. And you know what? This character's name is Jackie. My hand is cramping. Okay. Let's get rid of this for now. That's good there. I need to do assets. reference image. How tall is this thing? She's going to be one and a half meters tall, so this is going to have to go way down. vaguely right. What if I squish her? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this into uh, Blender once I've gotten this very basic outline of the body.
This is turning out okay. And yeah, currently I'm just getting it like vaguely correct. And this will be primarily to make sure that I get the size right. Look at that. turning out okay. Let's see. For the torso, we want the neck to come out. This is going to have to be a lot shorter, so. Because eventually, this is all going to be the neck, and then this one this at some point. Whatever. Right now we're doing the size reference. And I'll make this Okay, that is now our size reference so that I can make sure that this is actually going to scale right. And I have a little plugin that I made to uh, make it easier for me to export things. to save my export settings, I will. Uh, I'll just save it again. player. Slightly too tall. And because of the way the scaling works, it's like it... <laughs> Let's see that again. Yeah. So the scaling works a bit weird when you have mirror modifier on, so if you're scaling something, set this from median point where it is normally to 3D cursor and then make sure the cursor is in the uh, center with shift S cursor to world origin and then I'm gonna do point nine five 
just a little bit. And I'll apply all transforms. And then I forgot to apply modifiers. this. Sometimes Godot doesn't re-import things properly, but it did re-import it properly. I'm just doing something wrong. I'm applying the modifier. Okay, I, that's good. I don't know why it wasn't working before, but okay. So our little character's looking right. We're gonna expose that here. And we're gonna remove this So for now, the character doesn't rotate at all, and there's a bunch of stuff. Wow, you can jump really high. And also when you crouch, you're, rot you, you're still replaced with a ball right now. That'll eventually be fixed. Okay, that character's actually turned out pretty well in like 10 minutes, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now I just need to like, make her look better. Turn this back to medium point. And I'm not gonna do anything too fancy with the hands, I'm just gonna make them a little a little thing like this. No, I do need real fingers. I'm gonna eventually have to, uh... Because I need, because the character is going to eventually hold a gun, so I need to at least separate the index finger from the rest of them, which is exactly what I'll do. With V. And I'll just have some nasty triangles there.
Is that? That's okay. I need a line there, yeah, because I'm going to now smooth out this hand a bit. Let's just smooth that. Uh, let's keep that off for now. At least now I can pretend that it looks good. soundtrack is just so good. I just love the... I mean, pretty much any soundtrack by Ludosity Games is really, really good. Even... Well, I just like their games. So yeah, Card City Knights 2. Great soundtrack. Really fun game. I really like the Card City Knights series. Thumbs are so hard to model. That's good enough. Actually need more geometry here. And a way smaller neck, wow.
Hmm. I think this chest is... The torso is just too big. All of this is going to have to shrink down a lot. That's not... Something like, uh, that's a bit too exaggerated. Let's see how that looks in solid. Yeah, that's way too far forward. Uh, yeah, this is where proportions get hard. I can just doodle, like I can carelessly doodle a little character but now I have to actually commit to physical space everything that I've done. Maybe I should have taken more than 10 minutes. need to be chunkier. <laughs> this seemed so easy just five minutes ago. topography. Hmm. 
I should have put some effort into figuring out how this head would work. Got that classic shovel face. Alright, let's put my money where my mouth is. Man. That does not uh, look that great. don't know how to make this face. Or do I? I'm just going to draw the eyes on. I'm not even going to deal with properly, like, modeling that. I'm just going to bevel this. Eh, whatever. This is... It's, it's retro. It's retro. It's not bad topology if it's retro.
that's screwed up. I guess I could move the whole body forward. I think I need to move that forward. Okay, that's, that's coming along. That's not terrible. This is pretty bad though, whatever this, whatever is going on here. happening here. Yeah, that's good enough. Then a bit of, I guess, bicep definition. Hmm. Well, the plans of mice and men. faces. Making that, that is, what the hell? I need to put a sensor bar over that.
I'm picking at details too much. That's going to be... Uh, this poor creature. What have I done? This is tragic. Oh well. Wow, there's a lot of polygons here. Let's just make that a disaster for now. Hmm. Excuse me, what is that? This is a screwed up mess. <laughs> and some humongous feet. Just some real clown shoes on this one. Well, I've certainly made worse 3D models in general. geometry.
Let's see, I'm gonna use the restroom and get some water. It'll be about a five minute break. <laughs> 